Good morning, this is week eight, day two, 2024. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do ask that you, as our great high priest, would deal with us when we are ignorant or wayward. We ask that you would be gentle with us and help us to practice the work of discernment, to not grow weary in this calling on our lives, and to not find ourselves drawn away by the things of this world to abandon the hope that we have in you. We ask that you would encourage us this day through your word and the work of your spirit. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 2, mentions this notion which we find elsewhere in the scriptures of gentleness. We read this in Titus 3 on Sunday, the idea of being gentle toward one another. And uh, there are times where, uh, particularly myself as a father, uh, tends to think that a uh, stern hand or a stern voice, uh, stern instructions, uh, just telling somebody how to fix the problem is the path to take. I had to be reminded on a few occasions and encouraged by my wife uh, to listen, to have a bit more patience and a bit more affection in these sorts of moments. And I, for one, am glad to say that our Savior is one who does not snuff out the smoldering wick. He does not break the bruised reed. He was tempted, as we were, yet without sin. He took on human flesh and experienced everything that we experienced, that he might help us, that he might deal gently with us, when we are ignorant and wayward. And unlike a sinful father who sometimes doesn't know the best way to apply gentleness or sternness in a given situation, we know that our perfect Lord will always do what is right, even when we ourselves may need a bit of a sterner hand in our lives from him. But if he were merely stern and not gentle, I think God would have written all of us off long ago. And so my first thought on this particular passage is to be thankful for the mercies of God in Christ, that he is patient toward people like me. We also have been seeing Jesus contrasted, set apart, and, and better than angels, than Moses, than priests here. They human, merely human, shall we say, high priest, must offer sacrifices for his own sins in addition to the people's. Yet, that is not something Christ had to do at all. And he hearkens his priesthood back to Melchizedek, if you remember. He showed up to Abraham after one of Abraham's uh, battles to rescue Lot and, and some others. And he pays Melchizedek a tithe. And he's called the priest of the high God. He kind of disappears from the scriptures after that moment. 
And, and here we have Jesus having this sort of relationship to this priest of the days of old. And although Jesus, verse 8, was a son, the son of God, he learned obedience through what he suffered. There was truth in the sense of the, the fully man side of Jesus, the fully man nature, actively learned something in his obedience to the Father's will. And a lot of that ended up coming because in that obedience, he suffered. He suffered at the hands of sinful men, of people who fought with him and hated him and debated him and, and took every chance they could get to point out ways that they thought he was wrong, to declare things about him that were completely unfounded and untrue. And of course, we know he suffered all the way to the cross. And yet, through all of that, he carried out total perfect obedience. And so there is this sense of perfection in the work of Christ because he never faltered, because he never fell, because he never sinned. And as a result of that perfect work, he is, verse 9, the source of salvation for all who obey, all who follow him, all whose lives show forth true faith, that they are producing fruit. And then, you know, I prayed about God helping to give us convictions. Here's one of them right here. Are we indeed growing? Or are we still uh, consuming this concept of milk? Basic doctrines, basic understandings of the faith. Are we becoming dull in our experience of the Word of God, our understanding, our consumption, our reflection? Are we working our way toward manhood? so to speak, to maturity. We've talked about this persistence in our lives of endurance over the long haul, of a long walk in the right direction. And verse 14 here, he talks about maturity and how we should all have discernment, which I fear is something that is lacking in our churches today. But the way that you grow in discernment is by training it. Training it to distinguish good from evil. So if we are not taking the messages of the world, for instance, and comparing them to the Word of God. If we are not taking the claims of the value of human life that the world tells us, such as the fact that, uh, oh, that, that humans are just another animal. There's nothing really that sets them apart. We just happen to come out at the top of the food chain. Are, are, are we embracing that as a true fact? and allowing that to color our understanding of our fellow human beings to the point where certain sects of people have less value than others? Or are we saying, well, let's hear that idea and let's hear what God says. Let's see what God says about humanity being created in his image. And as a result, all human life has inherent dignity and value because it is made in his image. And what are the implications of that in terms of how we treat all humans, regardless of whatever category we may want to place them in? And we have to do that with a lot of these competing messages that come at us 
uh, from the broader culture. And the only way we get better is by practice. So to summarize and kind of wrap up and leave you with some thoughts for today for reflection, are there people that you know to whom you ought to be more gentle? Are there people that you might know who are weak or wayward, who may need a word of encouragement? We need to be able to discern whether that is a gentle word of encouragement or whether we need to have a bit more of a a firm hand, so to speak, with people. Are we practicing, distinguishing in our daily lives good from evil? And in doing so, growing in our knowledge of good and evil, our ability to discern these things and to grow in our own obedience to, to Christ, just as we know our Savior was perfectly obedient to his Father. Let's pray. Gracious God, we ask that you would give us the equipping power of your Holy Spirit to have this sort of a discernment in our lives, to have this particular attention to the people around us, to try and see others as fellow image bearers and the implications that flow from it. Help us to not have hardened hearts about these things, but to be able to extend grace as we have been given grace. We ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen.